What's up guys, Celestra here again, bringing you another guide. This time it's back to the ruler of the outer worlds. This is just basically another build for you guys to use. You've probably seen it somewhere else as well, but this one's a little bit more tweaked, similar to what Cloud's build was for Bonds of Friendship. Basically, we're going to be using Wind Magic for this. Similar to the other build, you're going to use Brumal Form and ATB Ward with Aerith to basically just give your teammates an insane amount of ATB and just dance around like this. So if you haven't actually seen any other videos that relate to this, I'm basically just showing it so other people can see it. But the way it works is Yuffie actually has Brumal Form, which gives ATB to everybody else when you're dancing around in the actual ATB ward. But what I do in this build, differently from what I've seen other people do it, I make sure that I have Magnify on the Wind Magic. So when you're fighting both summons at the same time, you can hit them both at the same time doesn't really work with Phoenix and Kujata here because Phoenix is basically immortal until Kujata's dead once. But as soon as he's dead and Phoenix revives him, you can just hit them both at the same time. The only caveat to this, however, is in this build, I've made Aerith a little bit stronger, but she will take fire damage. So unlike other builds where everybody's got fire elemental magic on, Aerith is going to be taking fire damage here. But the way I've set this up is we gain a crazy amount of ATB. What we do, I'll just basically explain from the start. So what we do at the start with Barret, we haste Yuffie, we cast ATB Ward from Aerith on Yuffie, and then we start dancing around in the ward with Brimal Form. And then after that, once everybody's got enough ATB, you can just do whatever you want. So you use magic mostly from Aerith inside the ward. So what I usually do is I put the Spell Ward and the Invincibility Ward on top of the ATB Ward. So instead of casting on Aerith, you cast on Yuffie because she's going to be inside of it. And then you're able to cast two spells and you're going to be invincible while casting the spells as well. And I do that for pretty much every single fight and it helps a ton. Because Aerith is going to be taking damage from the magic here, from Phoenix. But since Barret has used Lifesaver, which is basically the move that just absorbs damage, he is basically the tank of this build and also can heal everybody with Prey as well. So anytime someone's hurt... Barret's probably got two bars of ATB. He can use Prey, and then Aerith will just blast people with magic. She'll get MP back, and then can just repeat the process. So if it looks a little bit quick here, it's because I'm kind of jumping around characters. But Phoenix is now dead, after Kajata dying once. And, yeah. So at this point, all we're doing is just casting magic on Kajata. But make sure that you demagnify it, so it does a little bit more damage. So Kajata's almost dead, and you can see Barret's got Lifesaver on, so he's just going to absorb any damage that Aerith or that takes. But he's pretty hard here, so you can kill Kujata or you can get him to pray for, for a little bit first before we go to the next round. But he dies here, so it doesn't really matter. It gets a little bit dicey in certain fights because you only really have one way to heal, which is pray. I think I put Chakra on Yuffie as well, but it doesn't really help as much as like a, a mass heal. Right, on to fight number two. So this is where the magnified material comes in handy. So same thing again. You want to make sure you cast Haste on Yuffie. And then with Aerith, you want to make sure you get the ATB ward on her as fast as possible. Unfortunately, she's getting attacked by Bahamut here. So I think he actually stops her from casting the ATB ward. So this gets a little bit dicey here at the start. But I basically just try and draw aggro over here so that they'll get away from Aerith. And I can build some bar and then start doing this drat again. Good thing is, Brumal Form actually avoids damage as well when you hit it at the right time. So Yuffie's able to get out of a lot of situations. So this was the only part that was a bit dicey here. So just make sure that you put it on Yuffie, then start jumping around like this, and you'll see how much bar you get is actually insane. So then we're going to prey on Barret just to get everybody's health back up. And then once Barret gets a little bit more bar, make sure to cast Lifesaver. But literally once we have this set up, we're almost invincible. So Lifesaver on Barret just to take the damage in case. Steel Skin as well, just because that will stop him from getting damaged too. And then with Aerith, I'm going to make sure to do the Arcane Ward on Yuffie, just like this. And she will also have enough to do the Radiant Ward, which is the one that gives you invincibility when casting spells. And then you start just spamming the magic. And like I said, you're invincible while you're casting spells, so this makes it a thousand times easier. I know I showed you the Dive Kick method, but I'm also going to show you another method with this, I believe. I'm going to see if I can maybe figure out another couple ways to do this, because it's a lot better having multiple ways to do these fights. This one seems way easier, because you're all you're doing is dodging around with Brimal farming, building a crap ton of ATB. And then they're basically dead as soon as you've got this set up. Because you see how much damage Aerith is doing here? She's casting the spell twice. 
And she's invincible while she's casting it, so that is doing like no damage. I think she got hit there just because she was outside the ward, but when she's inside of it, because of the build, she will teleport to her wards and then you can just do whatever you want. And Yuffie doesn't even get hit by that because Brumal form is OP. It's funny how many things you can find in this game that are overpowered in terms of like characters. So magic seems pretty OP in this game and like with the, the cloud build we're using wind because wind seems to be the pretty cons the most consistent magic in this game in my opinion. Fire and ice, Blazaga seems to miss quite a lot and Faraga's okay but you don't really seem to see a lot of resistances to the aero magic. And since we have the lightning one on as well we could hit Alexander with it but you don't really need to. The wind magic does fine. So now we're on to Odin and Alexander, which can actually be quite scary. But as long as you make sure you do the same setup, haste, ATB ward, start dancing around, get everybody's ATB up. Do lifesaver and other things. Here I was debating whether to cast wind on Odin straight away, but I was like, nope, we'll get the thing set up. So we'll get the radiant ward and the arcane ward on, and then we will start casting magic because that's what we want. And unfortunately, he hits Yuffie here. But the funny thing is, Brumal Form doesn't seem to trigger Odin's reprieval or reprisal, whatever he calls it. So just get Aerith inside of the uh, the ATB wards and stuff, and start spamming the magic. Odin will be dead long before he can actually do anything to us. So just do the same strat. Use Prey to heal everybody up. Like I said, Barrett's basically the tank and the healer here. So he's going to take the damage, and then anybody who has damage, he's just going to heal them up with Prey. And Odin is now staggered, so now he's pretty much dead. So everybody's got two ATBs, or they will in a second once Yuffie boosts them back up again. There we go. And Aerith will cast another couple spells. She might still be within the ward, but I don't think she is. Oh no, I think she jumps back into it. So he's basically dead here. So Odin's defeated, and now we just have Alexander. And he's pretty much a pushover when Odin's not in front of him. So get that arrow magic on the arms. I'm not sure if the magnify would have worked there, but I think I had it set to single. Because you could just magnify it on both arms and kill them both. And then this is the last fight you can use the magnify magic. So every time you're fighting Gilgamesh or fighting Sephiroth and practicing this, make sure to turn Magnify off with L1 and that will allow you to basically just hit them with a bit of stronger magic because if it's magnified it weakens it slightly. Not a huge amount but sometimes it can be the difference between winning and losing. So Alexander is now staggered. Everybody's pretty healthy which is good because we're going to be going into Gilgamesh's fight and we don't really want to be bleeding here. And there we go. Alexander's dead. One of the easiest ones to fight in Zack's one as well thankfully. And then we move on to the one of the hardest ones, arguably. I'd say Gilgamesh is probably harder than the Sephiroth. Alright, here we go. One of the hardest ones of this. We also have a sort of cure in magic on Barret so that we can take away the frog or whatever silence or whatever's on the characters. Because you sometimes need that on this. Because Gilgamesh is a little bit random at times. So the same thing again. Just get everything set up. Haste, ATB Ward, Brumal Form, get everybody's abilities going. I thought Aerith was um, frogged here, but she wasn't. Because the Sloppy Sword plays the one that can put it on them. So just usual thing, lifesaver. And then I'm going to pray with Barret as soon as I got a bar. Yep, just to keep everybody topped up. We need to make sure Barret is the one keeping everybody up. Because he's going to be taking the damage. And then get Aerith to cast all the wards. Arcane and Radiant and we're fine because we're avoiding all of this damage everybody's back up to two bars start spamming the arrow magic there we go he's lost the shield so now he's pressured
I don't know, I feel like I cast haste on Yuffie and it got taken off. That must have been something to do with Gilgamesh. I've never seen that run out that fast. But I know she wasn't building ATB, so if she's losing ATB while she's in the ward, then you know that she's lost it. But keep your eye on it. And then we're just dancing around with Gilgamesh standing right next to us. It's fine. We can handle this. Just keep spamming the magic. Keep healing or pressuring him with Barret. There we go. Already pressured. Get the ATB back up ASAP. Start spamming the magic again. What you can do with Barret as well, you can use the... I think it's called Lifeblood Cannon. And it does a lot of damage as well, but you need to make sure you heal him back up before Gilgamesh gets back up. Because you don't want to lose because you're hurting yourself. And he switched weapons. But he's already pressured again. He pushed us out of the ward, unfortunately, but it's fine. Just keep going with the magic. Heal with Barret, because we know we're going to be taking damage regardless. And he's, he's pretty much dead here. Just keep hitting him with the magic while he's in pressured state or staggered state. And then he will pretty much be dead at the end of this. Like I said, lifeblood cannon on Barret if you want to do more damage. But I was being a little bit cautious here just to make sure I could survive until Sephiroth. I'm pretty sure I said this in the... The previous video that I did with the dive kick method. But in the next fight with Sephiroth, make sure you can parry the shadowy chains. Or switch out something on Barret to make sure that everybody gets barrier of some sort. Because I can pretty much parry Sephiroth pretty easily. But if you're not 100% with the parries, make sure you've got something to mitigate a bit of damage. Because if you're all going to get caught, you're all just going to die. Especially Yuffie, because she doesn't really have that much defense. So same again, haste, ATB ward. There we go, we know we've got it, finally. Parried Sephiroth, blasted with magic, get everything set up. So I think here I actually use faith on Aerith, just to give her a little bit more damage. I totally forgot I even put that on her, so I was just basically using Barret's moves to mitigate damage and stuff. So I do Barrier on Yuffie here just in case, because he seems to do like crazy amounts of attacks to Yuffie. I know it's because you're on her, but I also didn't really avoid them with the Brumal form, which he must just be too quick for you to avoid it that easily. So same again, all the wards, get them all cast, make sure to parry the Shadowy Chains. Also, this is without the parry materia. So if I can do it without the power materia, you guys can do it as well. Or put the power materia on just to make it a bit easier. Just doing loads of damage while we're here. Aerith is taking no damage because she's in the wards. Do whatever you want on Barret just to mitigate damage. I wasn't sure who, who he was actually staring at here. So he managed to get Barret, which isn't too bad. The only people you don't want to lose are Yuffie and Aerith. If he gets Barret, it's fine, because you're going to end up damaging him to the point where he releases the chains. And if he's doing Shadowy Chains, you've already casted a spell, he's probably going to get hit and stop it. So he's below half health here, so he's going to switch into Fire State, which if you had the Ice Materia, you could do a little bit more damage to him here. But as you see, it's not like the Wind Materia is doing little damage, is it? He's almost dead. I wonder if they're probably going to nerf Wind Materia in the next game, because near enough every build that we found in this game involves the, f uh, the Wind Materia, and it's just ridiculous. I think it's because it, it sticks to the opponent instead of, like, Blizzard and Fire. Like, Fire sometimes misses, I've seen. But the Blizzard Materia, for the most part, will always miss if the enemy's moving around. So I'm glad I put Barrier on Yuffie here, because that did a lot of damage, and Barrier basically has, like, no health now. But the good thing is, we can get back into the barrier, and then just keep dodging around, get him to use Prey. We heal from fire anyway, Aerith doesn't unfortunately, so you need to make sure that everybody's kind of pretty topped up, because Barret's going to be taking this damage. And then, just Prey again, keep everybody up, 
Aerith will get inside the ward, cast the wind magic again, and there you go. It's pretty much dead. One last arrow magic. Goodbye, Sephiroth. I hope this one's a lot easier than the, the dive kick method for you guys, because I know a few you, you were struggling. But I will show you the materia build. It's similar to some of the other ones that you've probably seen, because I was actually told this when I was doing my live stream about this build, and I was like, I need to try this out. But it's slightly different, so bear that in mind. So this build is probably going to be identical to the same ones that you guys have seen before. I'm not sure who the first person is who did this build, but someone mentioned this in my stream, so I thought I'd show you guys if you haven't seen it yet. You guys have probably already got past the ruler of Outer Worlds anyway, but might as well show some people who haven't maybe seen it. So Crescent Sickle, Enhanced Garm Bangle. You can use anything as long as it's got a bit more defense. Speed Demon Keychain, because that gives you ATB when you use a weapon skill, which is pretty good. And then we have Chakra, just in case we need to heal. Speed up, spirit up, vitality up, vitality up, because Yuffie is very weak defense-wise. First strikes for some ATB. Titan for more defense. ATB boost, spirit up, HP up, elemental, and fire magic. So I wasn't actually going to put these on, but it seems like you kind of need it for the, the Phoenix fight. And sometimes Sephiroth as well. But then ATB charge up rate, open an ATB bonus, precision defense, synergy damage. And then for Aerith, we have the Plume Rose Rod, the Hades Armlet, the Genji Gloves, because she's going to be doing more damage than 9999. Wind, we, I think other builds use like the Blizzard and the Ice Magic, but I've always found the Wind Magic to be more powerful, which is why I used it in that Cloud build for beating the Bonds of Friendship, the one with Zack, yeah. But yeah, Wind Magic always seems to be pretty OP, because most things don't have resistances to it, and the ones that are weak to it get blasted to hell, like Titan. So it's a wind build, so wind, magic focus, wind, MP absorb, magic up, HP up, MP up, first strike, all unique ability, so Aerith will teleport back to her wards, swift cast, lightning and wind, in case we want to use lightning on Alexander, but we just use wind, it works pretty much the same, magnify and wind, so we can hit both summons at once, and then we have phoenix as well, I know there's only three matches where you're fighting two summons, but it's pretty good to like hit both at the same time if you can. And then we have Enduring Wards, so the wards basically last until we kill them. Um, reduce damage um, when you're blocking, because in case you need to block. Um, ward shift cooldown, and then HP up, so we're getting 200 extra HP. And then for Barret, it's the Barrage Blaster, the Cetron Armlet, and Choco King's Cape, so he starts with an ATB and we can cast Haste on Yuffie. Time Materia, ATB Stagger, Barrier. I only used this once on Yuffie because I wanted to make sure she survived if she got Octa Slashed. But I don't think you really need it. If you want more um, survivability, I'd maybe use it. But you'd maybe have to sacrifice the Magnify and put it on this so you could do it on everybody. Healing, just in case. Auto unique ability because you'll use uh, his ability on Triangle, which gives him Protect with this build, which is really good. Empowerment. I think I actually used this maybe like once or twice. But it's not really needed. If you want to swap it out for something else that you think would be more beneficial, go for it. Odin Materia. Cleansing Materia, Magnify, so this is just in case Gilgamesh does his usual patented I'm going to turn everybody into frogs move. Um, HP up, Prayer, Prayer is really good in this build by the way, Barret is basically the healer. So what we do in this build, as you've probably seen in the video and what I've probably explained, is the fact that you'll use Prayer in conjunction with Aerith, just spamming magic, and that'll just keep healing everybody up so they have no chance of dying. Magic Efficiency, Barrier, just to basically give it a little bit more pizzazz. Actually, oh wait, I actually went through this entire fight with Barrier and Barrier. Oh well. Either way. So I guess you could maybe replace whatever you want here. Because I've just utterly cocked this up. But anyway. And then you have Elemental and Fire. You'll notice, notice, you will notice that Aerith is the one that actually doesn't have the Fire Elemental magic on. And this is dangerous for her. But the fact that Barret uses Lifesaver and he has Prayer at the same time is pretty much just going to keep her alive through the entire fight. Overcharge, which is when he uses Overcharge, he gets um, Protect, which is really good. Overcharge Reload, so it charges faster. Trade-off, if he gets hurt, he gets more MP. And then HP Recovery by 25% when healing. So he heals himself more with Prayer and stuff like that, which is really good. And that's pretty much it. As you guys saw in the video, all you need to do is cast Haste on Yuffie, and then get ATB Ward up with Aerith. And then you just keep jumping about for a bit. And then what I usually do is put Arcane Ward and the... I think it's it's not Lustrious, it's the other one. Basically the one that puts 
invincibility on the people that are spellcasting magic. And you put them both on Yuffie because she'll be in the ATB ward. And then if anybody's getting hurt, you just use Barret to pray. And you also have Lifesaver, which will help the, the damage mitigation as well. And as you saw, it was pretty easy in that fight. So yeah, that's pretty much it for that guide, guys. If you have any video suggestions, like I've said, we actually have a Discord. I'm going to put the link down below. This is the Discord I set up for my Patreon where you can join regardless, but it's there for the Patreon more or less, where... If you're struggling with the Sephiroth or the Zack fight, I don't know why you'd struggle with the Sephiroth fight, it's pretty easy. But if you're struggling with the Zack fight, um, I can do it through SharePlay, which has actually helped quite a few people now. It's on my Patreon if you want to have a look at it. And all the names of the Patreons are going to be at the end of this video because they've supported me and they're amazing. But if you guys want to support me, just watch through my YouTube, support me on Patreon, whatever, and hopefully you enjoy the guides. But like I said, when the next game comes out, I'll be doing loads of content for that as well. And I'm probably going to do a few more videos for like hard mode and other items that you should probably get before you go into hard mode. But yeah, hopefully this guide has been helpful. Like always, subscribe to the channel, follow for more, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Not bad.